Hello, Julie here, and today I'm going to be making an art journal page. Now, I haven't done an art journal page for I can't remember how long. So here we go. I have to admit, this page didn't turn out anything like I was thinking it would. Now, I'm going to use a page out of my Happy Planner uh, notebook. This is a disc-bound book, and I glue two pages together and give them a coat of gesso in preparation for when I want to make a page. Now, I could have gone without the gesso for this particular one because I'm using um, some gel medium and I am completely covering the background with clothes tags. I'm not, I haven't got any rhyme or reason, I'm just um, adding them as they fit and uh, as I like the look of them. I'm using gloss gel to attach these and um, because I've got it I don't particularly like the gloss finish but that's not going to make any difference in this case because I'm going to give it a coat of gesso to cover up all these colours and mostly cover all the text as well so I thought it would be a good opportunity to get rid of this gloss gel I'm going to apply the gel under the tags and then once I've got them all in position I will also put a coat of the gel over the top. Once that was dry I got my gesso out and uh, gave it a good coat of a fairly solid sort of coat because I wanted to make sure that those colours because there was a black and a bright yellow and I think a bit of green or something in there so I wanted to make sure that they were fairly well muted and uh, not standing out too too much um, I did let my gel medium dry naturally I'm not a big fan of drying things with a heat gun so even this gesso I will set us let's set that aside to dry naturally as well just so it doesn't take that long to dry. Now for my background I'm going to use Glimmer Mists. So I started off using this one called Starfish and I am just about out of it. It's my favourite colour. Um, and when I went to the store the other day, the, sh the scrapbooking store, they didn't have any of that colour left, so I might be in trouble. Actually, I don't know that there's a lot of uh, glimmer mists around these days anyway. But uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just using a soft brush because there's not enough in the bottle to spray. So I'm using a brush to add a layer of this colour all over. Originally, I thought I would just sort of lay the colour into the grooves of the tags so where tags overlapped each other but um, that wasn't enough colour even though I, in, at this stage of the game I was going for like a real pastel look and um, so what I end up doing is using my brush and giving the whole background a coat of the pink. When that was dry I then came back in with my brush and I added detail around each of the tags Now I'm going to do some stamping in my background. I'm going to use my Jet Black Archival Ink. I've got a couple of stamps here. One is a Kazaz stamp called Life's Moments Background and the other one is a uniquely creative stamp called Bubble Wrap Numbers. And I'm just going to use those two randomly in the background. I'm not looking for a perfect image so I'm not going to use an, a stamping block. I'm just going to use my hand and just put bits and pieces of stamping here and there and um, I do not want straight edges or full images. So now I've got my piece in an old pizza box that I use for a spray box and I'm adding some more glimmer mist. I'm adding harvest orange, gold and black magic. Now Originally, as I said, this one page didn't turn out exactly as I'd planned. So originally I'd planned on having a pastel coloured background. But I am so heavy handed with colour that by the time I finished adding these sprays, 
there's no way in the world I could go for a pastel background. Once my sprays were dry, I took my page outside and sprayed it with a coat of matte spray sealer because I'm going to be working on top of these and because Glimmer Mists are water reactive, anything that I did on top of it without sealing it first would have the effect of moving that Glimmer Mist around and I didn't want to do that. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to start work on my focal point. Now I'm using this a wood mounted stamp. I have had this stamp for over 20 years. It was made in South Australia by Thinking Stamps and I just love this butterfly. So I've just got a piece of scrap cardstock and I'm using my embossing buddy on that. Then I'm going to stamp using my Versafine Onyx Black Ink. Um, I'm going to do it twice. There's a couple of reasons for that. One, I'm not sure what colour I want to use, whether I want to go for the pinks and oranges or whether I want to go for the blues and greens. So I'm going to do both and see which one I like the best. So once I have stamped that, I'm then going to cover it with um, embossing powder. I'm using a clear super fine embossing powder and then I'll heat that with my heat gun. Now I want to add some detail to those tags. I want to make them stand out more. So I'm using my Faber-Castell pit pen in black and this is one of the reasons that I put that sealer over the top. This ink that in the pit pen is um, Indian ink and when you put it on you get a few seconds to move it around but once it dries it's permanent so once it's dry nothing's going to move it which is ideal. So I'm just going to work my way around all of the tags, all of the borders of the tags, should I say, and just add some shading to it so that those tags stand out. You can actually see that there are tags in the background. So I'll do that all over. I won't make you watch all of that because it'd be like watching paint dry. So um, I'll come back to you when that's completed. Okay, so it's at this stage I decide I need to lighten this off a little bit. So I'm using modelling paste and a stencil. Now I have got no idea what brand or name of this stencil. No idea at all. I haven't written anything on it and I don't even remember buying it. So um, I'm just going to add some texture paste through this sort of like grid type pattern on my stencil. Just um, here and there in about... I think five areas. Now while my texture paste is drying I've just um, dug out a few scraps from my scrap box that are in colours that I think will go well with um, my background and I'm just cutting strips. Uh, some strips are half an inch, some are three quarters of an inch and I'm just cutting them whatever length they happen to be. Now to help my strips of pattern paper blend in with the rest of my page I am using gold uh, glimmer mist to just spray lightly here and there and then I will also give a coat of iridescent gold which is just like a clear with a bit of a sparkle. Now I also wanted to sort of lighten off that white um, paste on my page so I gave my page a coat of the iridescent gold as well. It doesn't really have much colour it's just got more of a sheen. Now I'm going to colour my butterflies. Now as I said I, have, I don't know what colours or exactly what I'm going to use on my page but I'm going to colour the both of them. The first one I'm going to colour in pink and orange and the pink is picked raspberry, the orange is carved pumpkin and the yellow is fossilised amber. And I'm just going to use my water brush and colour from the centre. So starting with the lightest colour and close to the body and work my way out. So I'll have the yellow, then the orange, then the pink and I'll try and blend those together as I'm going. On my second butterfly I'm going to use um, Distress Oxide uh, inks for those two. So it's Salty Orange, uh, sorry, Salty Ocean and Cracked Pistachio. And the yellow that I'm going to use is Distress Ink called Squeezed Lemonade. 
for the bodies I'm going to use the um, black soot. I'm going to put the black soot on the body fairly thinly because I want that shading still to show. Using my Distress inks and my Distress Oxide inks with a water brush is one of my favourite ways to colour anything, whether it's butterflies, flowers, whatever. I'll do my best to put links to the things that I've used in this video in the description box, but some things I know I won't be able to link to, like the butterfly stamp, because that would be well and truly gone by now. But of course you could use any butterfly stamp, you could use any stamp image at all, whatever you like to use. Now that my strips of paper are dry, I'm going to start playing around with placing them onto my page. I'm going to leave the long edges um, straight, but I'm going to tear the narrow edges. And once I've got them to the length I want, I will ink around the edge of them and then attach them to my page. I'm going to use the art glitter glue to attach these strips because um, normally I would have used the gel medium, but of course with the glimmer mist on those strips I don't want to run the risk of moving that around and making a big mess so that's why I am sticking with the uh, glitter glue. So now I decided to do a little bit of stamping on those paper strips. They're plain, there's no print on them, so I thought I'd just add a little bit of interest to them. Now my mum gave me this stamp set. It's um, alphabets and numbers and, you know, apostrophes and things like that. And it's by Paper Poetry and the brand is Rico, R-I-C-O. So I'm just going to take some random stamps, both letters and numbers, and stamp them onto a couple of those strips of paper. Time now to decide which butterfly I want to use and I could not make up my mind and I decided that I liked them both on there. So I'm going to use my art glitter glue once again to attach my butterflies to my page. Now for the final touch for this page, I keep some watered down white acrylic paint in this fine liner bottle and I'm going to do a scribbly white border all around my page. I just want to lift it a little and bring a bit more of white in, seeing as how that white texture paste is basically the only white on the page. So now um, this border I hope will bring the whole page together, tie in the texture paste and complete my page, giving it a bit of a lightness, a bit of a mm, bit, bit more white. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching my video. I, I tell you, I've enjoyed making this art journal page. I haven't done art journaling for so long, and um, I really don't know why, because I do enjoy it when I do it. So I might have to get into that a bit more. So, yeah, thank you for joining me. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please, um, you know, give me a thumbs up and a, leave me a comment. I love reading your comments. And uh, it's always good to have you join me. And for all of those people that have been my subscribers for a while now, I have to say thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And for all those new people that have joined me recently, thank you for joining me. And I hope you can all join me when I post my next video. Okay, bye.